human beings by their nature are different. They're unequal. They have different abilities, different skills, different talents, uh, different work ethics, different moralities, different characters. That's metaphysics, that's reality, that's the way it is. The only way to undo that, the only way to get an equal outcome from a bunch of e from unequal uh, entities is to eliminate the people who stand out. It's to lower everybody to their lowest common denominator by using force against those who are better, who are more able, who are more uh, skilled, who work harder, whatever the talent is. Uh, no, because the people making the billions of dollars are making the billions of dollars. It's them making it. It's theirs. And you don't have any more right to take their money from them than you have a right to take anybody's money from them or anybody's property. You don't have a right to other people's property. So the fact is that they make it. And the only way they make it, the only way to make billions in a free market, not, not necessarily in the world we live in today where there's cronyism and there's connections and there's political manipulation, but in a free market, the only way to make billions is by providing a service or, or, or product of value to your customers by improving, in that sense, the lives of everybody else. And the more people you affect, the richer you're going to get. It's no accident that Bill Gates is the richest man in the world. One of the main reasons for that is there's almost no person on the planet whose life hasn't been improved by Microsoft, either directly or indirectly. So billions of people have bought the product, many products, and as a consequence, he has generated an enormous amount of wealth. But he created that wealth. He didn't take it. He didn't steal it. The opposite. It's not only that he didn't take it, by creating the wealth, he made everybody he touched better off. Well, if we go back 500 years to Europe, who were the rich? The rich were the aristocrats. What made you an aristocrat? That you were a better thief than anybody else. That you had a stronger little clique that, that could collect uh, you know, people's taxes, taxes basically, uh, through exploitation. The whole, the whole idea of uh, uh, society then was that a certain group, the aristocrats, exploited everybody else. So the perception has always been, in, in, a, in I think primarily in Europe, for, for generations, that wealth equals exploitation, wealth equals stealing, wealth equals robbing. The, the concept of a robber baron was applied to barons, to aristocrats, who put, you know, put uh, uh, on, the, on the roads, they put taxing stations, you know, custom stations, and they robbed people, highway robbery. That's how they got their wealth. America, America represents a different era in, 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 in history. It represents an era in which wealth is for the first time in human history, through the Industrial Revolution and through freedom and capitalism and liberty. In America and then in, in, in parts of Western Europe, wealth for the first time is created. It's not redistributed, it's not stolen, it's not taken. And if you look at income per capita or wealth per capita, for 10,000 years it's basically flat. And then suddenly it skyrockets. And it skyrockets at exactly the point in history where we recognize individual liberty, where we recognize individual rights, where we allow people to be free, and therefore where people now trade instead of steal. And trade is win-win, so both parties are benefit, and the standard of living of all, everybody in society went dramatically up. And at the same time, inequality exploded because, because some people created a lot more than other people, but everybody got richer. It's a psychology of hatred. It's a psychology of resentment. It's a psychology of envy. It's, it's, a zen, it's, it's, the, it's the bully who, who probably wasn't strong enough to actually be a bully, but it's, an intel, it's intellectual bullies. It's people who want to knock other people down because they've got A's. Right, because they got the straight A's. So it's the schoolyard bully now manifests itself in intellectual life. These are people who resent the businessman who's created so much, who's done so much, who's succeeded so much. Why do because the businessman, the businessman's not as smart as they are. So how come he gets, he gets all this uh, profit and all this success? And they've built up. It's not that they think that way. It's the psychology that drives it. So they create a whole construct of Marxism. Or, or exploitation theory, all these modern economic theories, or sociological theories that try to explain how the you know capitalism doesn't really work and it really is exploitation and nothing really has changed from 500 years ago. Nobody, nobody with eyes really buys that. 
but but to motivate yourself to believe in in junk like that in my view you have to have some psychological you know resentment. your resentment envy envy is envy i'm going to find as hatred of the good for, for being, being the good, good. And, and, you know, so that's the kid who, who likes to bully the straight-A student. You know, there's also the phenomenon of you always see the kid who likes to build towers, and then there's the kid who likes to knock them down. And I believe that people like Paul Krugman and people, people the intellectuals, the, the, you know, the kids who like to knock down, who like power over other people. It's not about truth. It's about power. And that's what drives many of these people. There is no such thing as equality of opportunity. So again, the only way to create equality of opportunity is to take from some and give to others. It's the same use of force in order to create equality of opportunity. The only legitimate use of the term equality is equality of freedom, equality of rights, equality before the law. It's political equality. In, in, in politics, we should all be equal. But beyond that, there is no such thing. There's no concept of equality. You can't have equal opportunities. It's a, it's a platonic ideal that cannot manifest itself in reality. So, and the only way to try to get there is by using force and, and force, coercive force is bad. Look, luck exists. There's no question that luck exists. Uh, and, and it's more than that because the leftists make the claim that you're lucky what century you were born in. Warren Buffett, I don't know if you know Warren Buffett, the second richest man in America, says uh, it's all luck. I was uh, born in the right century with the right genes to the right parents. And if not for that, I would have probably died when I was when I was a you know young child because mm. I don't have the skills to survive 500 years ago. I have the skills to survive in the late 20th century. Mm. All that is true. Luck is not unfair. All that is true. Luck is luck. It's there, right? The, the the fact that you're born with particular genes, the fact that you're born to particular parents, a particular century, that's just metaphysical. That's not morality. Morality is about human choices. You didn't choose that. So that's just meant. That's just reality. Now the question is, what do you do with it? Well, and the fact is. The different people do different things with the same set of circumstances and people do have in spite of what is implied by this idea that we have no free will we do have free will we make choices we make decisions it's also true that somebody else's bad luck is not a moral claim against me yes some people have bad luck and they can come and, and ask me for help but the fact that they have bad luck does not give them legitimacy moral legitimacy to steal my money or to take my stuff. Well, I mean, the government does provide education to the poorest and I feel sorry for the poor for <laughs> having the government provide that education because it provides a lousy education and a lousy product because it's not the business of government to be in the, in the business of education. And as a consequence of that, we are destroying opportunities for the poor. We're destroying their ability to rise up and be successful because we're giving them the worst education possible. Any private entrepreneur could provide educational products far, far better than what the government provides today. And, and this goes to the nature of government. The nature of government is coercion and it is force. It is a gun. A gun does not belong in a classroom. And that's so look, I believe in maximizing opportunities not in equal opportunities, maximizing opportunities. And the way to maximize opportunities is to maximize freedom, is to maximize the ability of entrepreneurs at any income level to go out there and create, create jobs and create businesses and, and work hard and, and, and hire people at whatever wage they're willing to work at. So it's, if you maximize freedom, you maximize opportunities and everybody ultimately is better off. Sure. In the state of Nevada, they have something called they have something called an education saving account, and what it what it does is Nevada still taxes everybody uh, uh, for education, but if you don't want to send your child to a public school, Nevada takes the amount of money they would have spent on the child. I think it's ninety percent, not a hundred percent, but ninety percent of what they would have spent on the child, and they put it into a saving account, tax free. And you can spend that money on any form of education. You can homeschool, you can send the kid to private school, you can buy courses online. You, you, I mean, it really is wide open. And it's not, it, it, the, the vendors don't have to be licensed by the government. It's, it's whatever you think and whatever you can show is education related. You can use that account for. You can, if you have money left over, 
you can roll it into the next year. And if you have money accumulated there after high school, you can roll it into college education free of taxes. So what this basically does is let's take a, take a poor family who let's say today we believe, I don't completely believe this, we believe that if education was completely privatized, they couldn't afford an education. Well, the state is giving them the money. So they have the money. There's no, and now they can actually go and shop for an education. They can decide to go to public school. The public school is the best option, but entrepreneurs can now enter the state of Nevada, start schools, offer products, advertise to parents, and parents have the money to be able to send their kids to school. I think it's a potential revolution. I hope the entrepreneurs take advantage of it. I hope educational entrepreneurs come to the state of Nevada, they start schools, they invest in schools, and that and that hopefully parents are smart enough to start sending their kids to, to the good or the better private schools and create real competition, both among the private schools and between the private yeah. schools and the public schools. And ultimately, if that works right, public schools in Nevada would disappear. And that would be ideal, and then that could be a model, and then over time, we could actually start phasing out the government financing it because education would be so cheap because competition would drive the cost down. I mean, that's my that's my dream. But uh, but I think we've, Nevada's taken an important first step in that direction. Look, it, that's not easy. It, it, it's not. It isn't an issue of simpler people. It, it, to if you think about Western civilization, the Enlightenment and the creation of America are major achievements major intellectual achievements. It requires thought, it requires reason, it requires a scientific revolution and enlightenment and great thinkers and people studying and people reading and people getting it. There's no gimmick, there's no short thing. There's, and, and I know everybody wants to, it, we all want it, right? The silver bullet that'll just change the world. But there isn't one. And, and what we need is to resurrect the enlightenment. What we need is to teach people how to think, to, to have people study the, the right ideas and the ideas of liberty, of freedom, of, of proper economics. Um, and that takes a long time and it's not easy. And we need to make it accessible to them. So yes, we need to make it in, uh, in the kind of bite sizes that they can consume in the right kind of media. We need to make more videos and whatever, whatever the medium of the moment is. But it's still an intellectual challenge. We still you have to be demanding of, of people. When people are not, when, when expectations are set low, you know, you get Donald Trump uh, or Bernie Sanders because, because then it's pure appeal to emotion. We have high expectations and, and we, we have to be demanding of our audiences. They have to think. If people don't think, we lose.